Life on the street, uh, it's not easy. You sleeping on the street, sidewalks, roads, sometimes the bridges, whatever you can find, but it's not easy. It's hard, you know, especially when it's cold out here too, you know, yeah. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, I'd just say that, yeah. It can happen to anybody. I've seen young kids out here. Yes, kids, homeless. Uh, homeless do not have no age, no color. It can happen to anybody. Trying to get myself out is hard. Housing is high, and it's kind of hard to do, you know, if you don't have the money for it. So I've just been hanging in there. Well, I come here from Mississippi. I'm originally from Missouri. I was with my mom then. We stayed in the projects, okay, on uh, Grant. I was disabled then, yeah. How did you become disabled? Ah, uh, it was when I was three years old. I ran over by 18 wheeler. see. I uh, moved from Mississippi to here. Uh, I was at a bus stop where the bus was pick you up. And uh, went to use the restroom, come back. Somebody stole my backpack, duffel bag, all my clothes, ID, was all in it. Boom, that was it. Homeless ever since. Can't do too much when you're homeless. So I try to do what I can. How you looking? Did I have Ooh, when I met Wildflower, let's see. I met Wildflower the first time. Uh, it's at the veteran together. Yeah, when I met her there at the veteran. Yeah. And we've been together ever since. My name is Wildflower. <laughs> Wildflower, dancing in the rain. There ain't no shame in my name. I play, no game. She was a lot of help too. Yeah. So I love her for it because I am a loner. So since I found her, it changes a lot. Yeah. Um, I was in a domestic violence uh, situation. Really five years, and he ended up beating me with the bat. What? Uh-huh. And I said, I'm done. I'm out. I would rather be homeless than continue to be beat. I'm from Joplin to Springfield. My son lives here in, in Springfield. He's 10. And guess what? I got to see my son the other day. I haven't seen my son in five years. And I got to see him, and he smiled. He was happy to see me. That's why I'm here in Springfield. To get, I'm trying to get sober because I am an alcoholic. I'm a hardcore alcoholic. And I want to get sober, and I want to get back involved in my son's life. Well, I came here to connect and ground, and I hung here for a while. Then, Somebody brought up singing, so I tried it out, you know. And ever since then, they named the Street Choir, and I've been going to it ever since. I heard that uh, Grace is not open no more on Tuesdays, and I was like, oh, okay, where do everybody go and eat? Okay, well, they say that they have connecting grounds on commercials, so I walked all the way to commercial and I saw them. 
you know, and I was like, okay, well, these people weren't lying to me, so they, that's that's cool. And then a week later, I found out they, they had a choir, so I was like, okay, I'm going to join them. <laughs> Mother, I guess some friends had told me, hey, they're they're having dinner over here, get there at four, and I got there at four, and they had street choir, which was cool. Um, so that's kind of how I, I I joined up, and uh, they're really I really enjoy it. I you know, singing and just. Being around people, that, you know, their minds are off their situations. They're focused on something positive. Just being around that definitely, like, um, you know, just brightens my day every every Tuesday. And so the great thing about the choir is that it lets us take homeless people and make them visible in spaces where homeless people are otherwise not welcome. So what gave me the idea for the choir was that I had gone to a conference in Kansas City this past about a year ago, right now. And I had been able to see the Dallas Street Choir do a workshop there, and it was just the most amazing thing. Um, I had never heard of anything like a homeless choir, and so I went to go check it out, kind of oblivious to what, what I would see. And it just rocked my world, and I saw real people uh, that were facing real challenges that wanted to do music, and they could do a choir, and there were people that were ready to step up and lead it. And so I thought, Springfield's the perfect place to do something like this. They approached me right after we began our fall rehearsal season about becoming a member of it. And, I, and then I went to the library and went online and watched the YouTube videos of the Dallas Street Choir and what they were doing, the rehearsals, the performances. And I said, I'm, I'm in. I was in a relationship and uh, when it went south, um, I decided to give the house and the home and she left up and uh, I've been homeless since. There's nothing home to go, there's nothing to go home to, there's no home. And home is where your heart is and that was my heart. I'm, I'm a schizophrenic, multiple personalities with uh, paranoid delusions. I got into drugs. I hid my mental illness through drugs, like you know, through, through drugs and alcohol a lot. I've only been clean and sober for the last month. A month ago, I was the man burning your houses, kicking in your doors, doing whatever it could to get high, stay high. I, mean, I, I wasn't right. I, I wasn't. I wasn't to the point where I was out here robbing, stealing, and killing. Yet again but I was going down a very dark path and wasn't happy with who I was become. I mean, I could justify, I could justify my wrongs and my trespasses every way possible, but the truth of the matter was, I was wrong. Not all of us are bad. There's a lot of really good people doing bad things and there's a lot of really bad people doing good things. I mean, it's all perspective and how you see it and how it is. Sometimes, Sometimes what you see ain't really the truth, because the man's the man's covering for the, the wrongs he did. But we all make amends for our wrongs and our trespasses in our own ways. I don't have I don't have no blood family that I care to claim. Just my street family. But the people in these neighborhoods, that's their family too. I mean, I, I'm from 417 Springfield, Missouri. I don't I'm not homeless. I'm houseless. I live in Springfield. This, right now, this is my living room. I'm cleaning it up, you know? Very first I mean, time that we had rehearsal, and when we first started talking about it, um, you know, some people were like, oh, that's silly. You know, why would we want to get involved in that? And kind of, I, I don't sing very well. And so the very first rehearsal, we only had about 20 people that came. And they weren't very sure what to expect and what it was going to be like. And by the second time, they were like, this was pretty fun. And so they started talking to their friends, and you had about 30 that showed up. So it didn't take long for them to go from being skeptical about being involved in something to feeling like this was a place where they could belong and using terms like, this is my family. This is what I look forward to the most every week. They started talking about how they plan their week around street choir. One of the things we do that we feel strongly doing, that's Kenny, all of us, Kenny, Katie, and myself, is our approach to the street choir is it's not just a group of people that are getting together and singing the same song at the same time. We are approaching it from a teaching point of view. We are teaching skills. 
We are teaching voice skills. We are teaching what could be called choral singing skills, how to sing certain phrases, how to sing certain words, how to sing certain vowel sounds. That is what we are doing. J.R. Harris, I'm 20 years old and I'm a street fighter. And you're so sweet. And you're a fine young man and you're gonna be okay. You're on the right path. Yes, you're on the right path and I'm so proud of you. I've been homeless for about, since about June of 2017, so almost three years. And what led me to being homeless was, I was being abused by my siblings and my mother was not doing anything about it, so I left home. And I chose I'd rather be out here than being abused every day. For the most part, it's worked. This wall right here. It's the graph, one of the graphic novel walls. One of the best walls in the building. Ooh, haven't read this yet. We're born as a polar bear. The legend of how I became a forest guardian. Seems like a good book. It's a manga. And I haven't read it yet. I'm only going to read a chapter, though. I go out from wherever I'm at, whether it be a camp or an abando, wherever. And I walk around for a little bit until about 9. Went until about 11. Then I head to the breed and get a meal from them. And then from there, I go and do whatever until it's time to head up to either connecting rounds or go back to the breed for dinner, or whatever. Bye, Whitney. This is Susie, you know. Bye, Whitney. I always say bye to staff. To top of the world, woo! first met Katie and Kenny and Joe they're new people you know they're they're new people I thought it was just a class that we're just gonna go to but comes to find out that the longer you go to it the more meaningful it becomes let me meet a lot of nice people who's actually helped me out a lot And I love the $2 incentive we get. So that helps too because I can, I can swap with people and they'll buy cigarettes and I'll buy cigarettes and we buy cigarettes for each other. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that even if, you know, well, to say enemies or people that have a disagreement come together and do something positive that both of them enjoy, it bonds them together closer. You know, it just seeing people, especially like earlier in the day that may have been arguing, you know, They'll go to street choir, and then when it's done, they're happy and getting along. Thanks, you know? sorority sisters, right? They have their problems and everything, right? But they're always there for each other, right? 
the exact same way. I feel epic. I feel excited. I feel like I'm skydiving and adrenaline is pumping through my, my, my veins right now. <laughs> That's the way I feel. Hey, y'all, support us. Support Street Clock. We may be homeless, we may be all this. Some of us may be drug addicts, but hey, we're trying to do better. <laughs> every time we sing and that it doesn't sound like much but you know some people that's going by and you know a little bit of food or some soda or some people you know buy cigarettes or what you know whatever some come in just for to get out of the weather for the choir um, some come in just for the money some come in for just for the satisfaction of getting a bus pass so they can get on the, the bus most of them come in to actually enjoy doing choir I don't, it's a good way to change perceptions, the outside's perception. You know, if we go into a place and sing, they may see homeless people more as individuals and actual people instead of just a big group together. I think it's also important to set your goals appropriately because I was, I was talking to somebody about the choir and they said, well, have you had success getting people cleaned up and with the choir? I'm like, no, of course not. But we didn't set out to. 
This choir does not exist to get people off drugs. And we are fully aware that the problems are much bigger than we can solve with music. If you are experiencing homelessness, getting a job is so hard. And just bootstrapping your out, yourself out of poverty is extraordinarily difficult if you don't have boots. I've not had anyone from the street choir, from the non-street choir, from any walk of life communicate to me any negative feedback at all. I just haven't. Um, we are the unicorn of the internet. Um, I have yet to see us get negative comments. Um, I, I'm sure it's coming. rules in this place and that is that you respect this building which means you don't bring your drama in we're not gonna fight we're not gonna get into it here um, that you respect each other and you speak respectfully and you respect yourself and so you know those are those are kind of the three tenets that we try to live by in this space there are couches all around this room and we try to keep people off the couches because it is very, if I was sitting on a couch, I would have a hard time sitting up and participating too. One thing that I've seen that's really been good is they tend to kind of discipline each other. Christy talked about leadership, and, and I see that all over the place. When someone's not doing what the group should be doing, um, there's some peer pressure there to not do what's wrong, but to do what's right. We've, we've found that by kind of laying down the law at the beginning, then they, uh, people, people rise to your expectations. We go into the fifth floor. That's because then you can see a lot. And I love seeing a lot of Springfield, no matter the time of day. All right. I don't know how long it'll take for her to get down here, but we're riding the stand elevator. It's too cold to walk. It's too far. These lights turn off. Like Sass did on the fifth floor for a while, the lights would all go off. I love it. It's one of my sleeping spots every now and then. This elevator? Yep. I know y'all don't want to go in the cold again. But we got a man. Hate the wind. Love the view. I absolutely hate this wind. Absolutely hate it. But man, that view. Man. And to think, I walk this all day, every day. Um, we definitely have deaths of homeless people that happen in, in Springfield all the time. Homeless Memorial Day is December 21st, the longest night of the year. We go under a bridge and hold up signs with the names of people who have died. The numbers of people and seeing their faces just is heartbreaking. You know, because I'm not saying I know 
have only been out here for a few months, but I mean, some of these people have been out here for you know a decade, and just seeing how strong they are to fight through it is is you know really amazing to me. Tony Poston, David Herbal. Um, we have we have not lost anyone from the choir in the four or five months we've been doing this, which you know. Let's let's hope we can keep it that way. And we actually, we have at least one song in our repertoire specifically for that reason, um, because I wanted us to, and I, I didn't tell the choir, we're putting this in our repertoire in case one of you dies and we have to sing at your funeral. Um, but that's why it's there. And um, when we go out and we perform then, we present that song as a memorial to homeless people who have died in our community. It's MLK by U2. And um, that's, that's why we have that song in the repertoire though, is in the event that one of our friends dies. Typical day, about like this. Boring, <laughs> nowhere to go. See that red building right there? Yeah, right there. See that red building? Mm -hmm. I stayed there. Yeah, you see what that lady said now? Mm -hmm. I've stayed there. And the other corner down there? Go stop thing. I've stayed there. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> see this building right here? I just stayed behind it. Yeah. I can name a lot of places where I've stayed. This is it. The hood. So you got to find whatever you can around here to stay. Yeah. And hope you don't get a trespassing ticket. When I woke up that morning, it was raining, water everywhere. And Springfield PD come there. Mr. Thompson, we told you, you trespassing. So there you go, ticket. Yes. It's rough out here. It really is. And you always need these. These are hard to get around here. I'm special, so I can get them. I'll let y'all later now. Okay. Yeah. TV crew with me. TV crew. <laughs> hey. How you doing, Jay? All right, all right. How you doing?
I'm going in the park if y'all want to follow. But yeah, this is my normal routine. I hate it at times, but at times I love it. Yeah, sit down and relax. Gets me away from all the dummies in this world. This right here, this spot right exactly here, is a place I come to get away from everyone. Because if you ain't actually looking hard, I can lay down. I disappear. Or I can be sitting just like this. You never. And I see kids come through here at night. I've got kids doing some weird stuff. And I've seen some funny stuff. Coming home, coming home to the place. I belong. It's called the ground. Man belongs on ground. Animal belongs in the air. People near the Midtown neighborhood are saying no more. About a dozen neighbors showed up voicing their concerns, saying that they feel unsafe in their own neighborhood. As an employee of a neighboring business, what can be done to eliminate all of the loitering that's going on. Right now the church is receiving a lot of bad blowback from the community because of some of the problems that were already here. It's not problems that the neighborhood didn't already have or, or hasn't had for a, a, a very long time, but it's problems that are seen more openly now because of the larger congregation, because of what the church does and the, and the way the church outreaches. They're, they're, they gotta have somebody to blame. The community has to have somebody to blame. So they're blaming, you know, they're pointing right now fingers at the church. It's easy to be negative about something that you're not familiar with. Once you become familiar with what's going on, once you experience it, even just for a short time, I think that negativity would be at least lessened, if not completely negated. I really do. The tough part is right now is that they're not trying to uh, uh, compromise with us right now, you know. So I feel like that we have to have more meetings with them to under for them to understand that we are trying. Their arguments, I, I understood several of them, and uh, you know, see where they're coming from. One of the concerns from one man is he doesn't he he's questioning whether it is responsible to do a homeless outreach like Connecting Connecting Grounds does if you don't have a, a big a large grant or federal. You know, funding, you should, he thinks you should have to have that before you can try to provide help to people. And I, I say it's irresponsible not to provide help to people when you're able to, so. There has to be a shift that happens in the way that our community views this population. And I think that's happening with the street choir, honestly. I think we talk a lot with street choir members during practice about being ambassadors and how they are an ambassador for their own community. And they are changing the way that people view homeless individuals. Um, and that's really, really critical. But it's also really critical that if we're going to, to challenge the community to see this population different, we also have to challenge this population to see themselves differently. By the way, it's Wayne. You know how you have connections with some of the street people? You might want to get the word out that they're actually looking, the neighbors of Connecting Grounds is looking to shut it down because of everybody's riffraff drama bull. So, if you guys care about one another, you might want to put it out there. My name's Heather. I feel that the neighbors in the area are just as well as unjust. It's a matter of the homeless coming together and putting their heads together and saying, hey, okay, we need to straighten up. But whether that actually happens or not, time will only tell. We don't, you know, it only takes one apple to run the whole barrel. I understand what that means. This is part of the community outreach program 
um, uh, the leader. I'm also, not only am I a member of Street Choir, the Springfield Street Choir, but I'm also participating in, in a class for leader, leadership program for the, for the Connecting Grounds Church. And this is part of that. There's several of us. There's supposed to be 20 of us. We meet um, weekly and, you know, we just talk about what being a good leader is, how to be a good leader, some, and kind of address concerns that she's heard from the neighborhood, neighborhood, you know, members or other areas of the city, you know, the Central City Utilities or, um, you know, any outreach, pro any other outreach program. Try to find solutions and then we can, you know, talk with others that aren't on the council and kind of spread spread some news and just try to say, you know, this is their concern. Uh, this is a way that we can we can you know work towards fixing it together. So I felt honored, I felt privileged, but most of all, it reminded me of how I how how I was before. It took me about two weeks to decide whether I could do it or not, because if I fell as an as, as a leader and an example. I, I, what I do and my actions, not only do I hold myself accountable to, but the community looks on and judges the others for. So if I fail, I fail, the, I fail my people. I think what our audience seems to forget sometimes, and it's okay, you know, is that as soon as everybody leaves, our singers, who everybody just came to celebrate, they go back out to the streets. It's really hard. You could freeze to death out here when it's cold. We had a guy pass away the other day. Uh, they don't know what happened to him yet, though. He was one of the hood. Yeah, he was homeless too. And he will be missed. Yes. Did you happen to know John Stark when he was in the choir? Um, I, we've talked briefly sometimes in passing, but I didn't really know knowing. I mean, I know his loss. It was one of many we've had this year. Like Tony. I knew him personally. We used to share camps together. Um, and to see the community come together and start doing something more is, it gives hope, it, it really does. But anytime you lose one of your fellows, I mean, whether you know them in passing or whether you know them, know them, it's a loss that we all feel together as a whole. I, we spent some time together and it's definitely unexpected. And I don't, there's different rumors of, you know, where he passed, where he was when he passed away. And, but I mean, it's just that experience, just knowing that someone that you were just you know, you, I mean, I've only, I don't know him since October, but you know someone any period of time and then you see what, you know, something like that happens, it just is heartbreaking. I mean, as John Stark, man, he would have given his shirt off the back for you. Like, he was one of the coolest dudes out there. fabulous performance that we've done so far was the one that we did at the Art Museum. Our first rehearsal on October 1st had 14 unsure people in the choir. And two weeks later, we had doubled to 30. And then by the end of that month, we were at 50 people. And now we lock the doors because we're at capacity. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And some, some people that are here, James, if they're not, if, if they don't get if they don't get there on time, 
night when we were showing up early, the choir was standing there and they were rehearsing. Nobody was showing up yet. And a worker of the, uh, the art museum came up to me and he said, hey Kenny, how many chairs should I set up for the audience? I said, probably like 30 or 40. I mean, we were kind of in a small atrium area. I said 30 or 40 should be great. I actually thought it might be too many, you know? And then I left and I came back and there were like hundreds of people. And Katie came in and said, folks, we've moved from the small atrium into the entryway, which is like four times larger because there are so many people. Street Choir sang six songs. Two of them we encouraged the audience to sing along, which they did with gusto. There was tears, there was smiles, there was huge applause from hundreds, hundreds of people. I was just saying, I was like, they're standing for you, <laughs> not for us. When we sang at the art museum, we had hundreds of people there and at least from the audience, I don't know if there was a dry eye in the house. I don't think there was, um, because what we are doing is powerful. Christy Love is the pastor of the Connecting Grounds, which is the smallest, most under-resourced church in this town that is doing truly amazing work. And we want to thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Very, very, very so. you to continue to see the homeless people in this town. Yes, we're very we, I heard a, and pray for us. And they pray, want you to pray for them. They want you to see them. We will understand and when you, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time. It was in all the years that I have worked with choirs, it was one of the most fun, moving, incredible things that I've ever been a part of. Well, we got a standing ovation. That was the best one. See, see, yes. That, there was like 400 people there, it wasn't expected. And they were really, had a really positive outpour of, you know, just love so, and happiness. I mean, and, when we, we, and when we perform good like that, I mean, not only does it make us look good, but it makes us feel good as well, because we come together as a group and we've done something greater than ourselves. And that gives us a sense of community. Things like thunder and lightning, I can't go back to sleep because I'm lying. Oh, we manage. We do. All right, guys, we're gonna get started. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah. Only in Missouri, though, right? Can we go from frostbite to heat stroke in like a week? Two hours. So it was freezing last night. All right. So first of all, I just want to hear how your weeks are going. So. Somebody start and just tell me something that's new in your world or something that's happened this week that you're excited about or... Um, it's been about six months, but I had an epic video chat from my uh, daughter, my child's mother told me, so I was able to see her. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. So, well, that's kind of kind of this week, so... Wow. Yeah. How long did you guys get to talk? 20 minutes. 
That's awesome. Well, my daughter's only one, so I got to see her like stared at her for like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. So. I'm glad you got that this week. Well, I finished up my action plan with Safe to Sleep this week. Finally got into Burrow, got my appointment done, so that wrapped up everything that I need to get done uh, on a personal level basis and get back to good. And I've got my um, disability check that's supposed to be here within like three days, and I'll be off the street. So I've got it, doing the and everything. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm really excited. That's amazing. It's been well over a year process, so it's, it's been really How about you, Dave? TV spot today. Yeah. Keller 10 was here today and just talked about all the questions that we have about keeping our unsheltered population safe during the coronavirus that is coming. I think there's some really legitimate concerns for for those of us that are very vulnerable. And so but yeah, but Dave was brave and shared his story and just being someone who's got health concerns and and some of those things, so he did a great job today. So that'll air tonight at five and six. So we're gonna set some goals today. That is, that is the objective today. Um, so we're gonna do this in a few different ways, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some collective goals. We have an uphill battle that we have to fight in this community, and honest to goodness, I think one of our biggest struggles is starting to change the public perception because, and I know you guys, we've had this conversation, it's frustrating when the 90% are viewed as the 10% cause issues. Don said continued conversation with neighbors and relationship I think is important. So I have committed um, to hosting once a month a conversation here that we will open up um, for neighbors to join us and um, we're gonna do it on Sunday afternoon, once a month, um, towards the end of each month. We'll do it over here on this side so it's a little bit more personal and engaged versus what we did last time over in the worship center that kind of felt a little us versus them. Um, but you know, I, I don't know how many people will choose to engage in that, but I think if we offer that. I did like three foot step forward. So we're starting with the musical guests, and it's a very special treat tonight. They're called the Springfield Street Choir, and it's made up of folks who have been homeless or are homeless, and they have a tremendous song to sing for you guys. Please put your hands together for the Springfield Street Choir.
we performed on uh, Mystery Hour, and that was really cool. You know, just having us to get it just. I know a lot of the people, they felt really, you know, important and special because we got to go and be on stage on a TV program that was. One of the things that really meant a lot was Jeff, the host, shook hands with everybody on their way out the, off the stage. And I drove the bus to the men's shelter afterwards, and they were talking about that on the bus, that, they, that he shook their hands. And again, that thing where reaching out to people as equals, that's what changes the world. Somebody else who step up though and provide meals that are in boxes. 
I'm gonna say, or we could go lunch. back to we can go back, back to lunches. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we need um, to, like, first of all, there isn't a quarantine plan for our homeless. Like, there's not a care plan. There is not any there's form of there's nothing. Like, so if you know one of them, ten of them, they're not just gonna quarantine them in the hospital without health insurance and things. So and when they need beds and. I mean, so I mean, that's something if we have to think about that, but at, at, at the bare minimum, like, is there a way to even bring in like some Cox medical students or like some people during this Tuesday night time just to try to help assess? Um, Jody was supposed to try to be here with the health department tonight, but my guess is that it's crazy over there. We just need to keep putting a bug in her ear that it is super important and we need to be preventive because it will be here and she knows that. Oh yeah. She knows the group situation. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Did you know the, the St. Patrick's Day parade is yes. canceled? Yeah. So they are looking at groups. So obviously groups are on their radar and we're an important group. The smarter thing to do is to put tables outside, have everybody grab a sack lunch and disperse, which probably is the smarter thing to do then we'll do it and that's fine. I mean, I hate I hate for them to lose that because it's important in a lot of important ways, but you know, we want we want to keep people healthy and alive as much as possible too. Start the second verse. Start the second verse, okay? Everybody be glad. And what is the big thing about the difficult thing about this song is the what is the difficult thing about this song? Words. 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 The words. Sit down. place for them to go, for them to gather, or for them to sleep. Um, we have asked questions um, of our police. We have asked questions of city leaders saying, you know, where should they go? Where can they go? Um, currently in our city, even under the state of emergency and a shelter in place order that is currently enacted, um, they are still taking down tents. Um, our homeless population cannot set up tents to shelter in place legally in our city right now. Our, our city both our, our sort of official leaders and and then you know the people the people in general need to understand that we are all linked together. What we do affects each other. And 
people are not disposable. They they exist and they are real and they matter. Literally the only legal thing that they can do in many cases is walk on the sidewalks. And so we are seeing, um, we're, we're seeing people go through shoes really quickly right now. Um, we're seeing people that are walking, you know, 10 to 15 miles a day just to kind of keep moving. Um, we're seeing a lot of people with dehydration at dinner. Um, so we've got medical personnel there that are checking on them every night. It is reasonable for them to fear that their, if they get it, their condition will deteriorate more rapidly because they don't have the ability to get good rest or to lay down somewhere and not walk all day. I have had some of our people who are afraid that if they go to the hospital and it's a choice between treating them or treating someone who has insurance, they're going to treat the person who has insurance. If You know, I, I will tell you this. Um, yes, we are definitely experiencing some pushback. And yes, we are definitely experiencing um, some neighbors and some business owners, some law enforcement officers, some city officials who do not like um, what we're doing and where we're doing it. However, the overwhelming majority of people um, have been incredibly supportive. I know that sometimes the negative voices are the ones that get the most attention and they're the ones that are sometimes the loudest, but um, I, I would say that they are still smaller in number than the overwhelming support of the community that we that we do see. You know, I mean, I think the choir will, will continue most definitely. Um, you know, once we get through this health crisis, which is, you know, unprecedented in our, in our nation in our world um you know they they will they will sing again they will meet again um they will come together in community again and i'm excited to listen to them sing songs of celebration for you know healing and coming together oh i didn't say hey god watch me i'm gonna swim in this water he stayed in the boat yeah a pretty one kind of a pretty cool my dear so I have heard you guys for several weeks telling me that you are missing street choir. Is that correct? Yes! Okay, so we're going to start at that corner down there and we're going to spread out all the way across here, all the way across, and then we're going to go down in front of the barber shop. And you need to be spread out about an arm's length apart if possible, okay? So if you guys will start to do that for me, we're going to hand out songbooks and then Katie will be here in just a few minutes, okay? It's been a rough season for a lot of people, okay? We're gonna just get to do a fun performance out here on the sidewalk for everybody and get to share that. And I have a feeling it's gonna get seen by a lot of people. Every, everybody yell and scream and say hi to Katie! Oh my gosh, you're the best! I brought myself a conducting lever. Awesome! Okay, so are we all here to sing? enthusiasm guys we're happy to sing together again let's do this thing also if you're wearing a mask you have to sing twice as loud okay I believe in you here we go again real soon. We're working on a way to make that happen, okay? So you guys have a lovely evening. If the Springfield Street Choir had to end because there were no more homeless people, I would walk away happy. 
I feel like I can confidently tell you that there will be homeless people in the future. So if there are homeless people there, I'll be there. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. I had a friend named Ramelin Bob. He used to steal and gamble and rob. He thought he was the smartest guy around. Lord have mercy on my soul. I don't know where I'm going, but I sure know where I've been. Oh, where have you been, oh, Billy boy, Billy boy? Oh, where have you been, oh, charming Billy? I had been to see a wife. She's the joy of my life. She's the young thing that cannot leave her mother. Stop playing cards and shooting dice. He's in the jailhouse now. He's in the jailhouse now. For it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. All right, there you go. Thank you all. <laughs>